Welcome back. It's Al from PC Tech Review 101. Today I'll be reviewing Micro Center's brand PowerSpec G429 Gaming PC. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and help me reach 1000 subscribers. Just click down below. So, I picked up this bad boy at my local Micro Center as an open box for quite a bargain. I must say I'm quite happy with this PC. This gaming computer features i7 8700K, Asus GTX 1070 dual fan graphics card, 16GB DDR4 3000MHz RAM, Intel 6000P 256GB SSD M.2, 1TB extra storage hard drive 750 watt 7 module power supply and 212 EVO CPU tower cooler and 220 millimeter blue LED fans basically all these parts can be purchased separately at Micro Center this is definitely better than buying uh, some of the other name brands uh, gaming computers like HP Omen or Alienware or Acer and etc uh, because those computers are proprietary so you know you're very limited to what you could do you definitely can't overclock uh, the processor and you're basically stuck with that same kind of motherboard where you can't really do much there's not much same thing with the power supply and and all the connectors to it you are kinda of stuck in that case this is definitely a good bang for your buck and uh, a lot of room to upgrade you could even uh, change to a better case uh, I know the power spec cases are not the fanciest but you know for the price uh, of thirteen hundred and ninety nine dollars currently retailing at Micro Center it's definitely a good good startup PC I mean all you really need is to maybe upgrade a graphics card in the future maybe to a 1080 or 1080 Ti but the way it is now is more than enough so let's see which accessories it came with and here's the the small accessory box that came along with the computer uh, it just has you know you pretty much your basic things and it has the power cable it has the you know brackets for more hard drives it's got the uh, two antennas for the Wi-Fi card uh, which you know the Wi-Fi does work without them but once you put these on you get much better signal and this this computer does come with 5G Wi-Fi card so it works pretty good uh, also two extra modular cables as this is a mo semi modular power supply uh, this will allow you one is a Molex and this is a another PCI Express uh, cable here if you want to add another graphics card and uh, go SLI mode as it does come with the ASRock uh, HB bridge for an additional if you want to do add another GTX 1070 and you put this bad boy on I mean it really makes a difference with these new hybrid bridges the, it does the performance is really good so if you if you wanna you know not spend a lot of money you could always add another GTX 1070 and you have an amazing performance so it'll, it'll be better than the GTX 10, uh, 1080 Ti in some cases in some of the games uh, also it came with the power spec driver installation disks disk and uh, also Windows 10 Pro as as uh, that's another good thing about this computer it does come with the Windows 10 Pro as a lot of the gaming computers that I saw on uh, on sale up there uh, some of the name brands they come only with Windows 10 Home but uh, 10 Pro is much better and also they don't come with a Windows 10 Pro installation disk this one does they what they have is a restoration disk 
and this is much better because if you just want to do a clean install uh, I always recommend once you get home with this with any of these computers just do a full clean installation and get rid of all the bloatware and all the extra things that they stick in there for you do a clean install set it up the way you want it and I and the computer will perform even better than f originally from coming from factory and of course the last thing is they have this really basic cheap keyboard you know wired nothing fancy uh, you know and that's that's pretty much it that's all it came with okay uh, here's a little bit of pretty much what it looks like inside um, I might remove the graphics card to show you better how it looks inside but I just want to show you the graphics card it's a Nasus it's really nice uh, it really gets cool it keeps uh, you know everything cool compared to a single fan one and uh, the motherboard is really good it's a ASRock Fatality Z370 gaming K6 uh, it's definitely good for SLI configurations it comes with two M.2 uh, slots over here on the motherboard and uh, you know this thing is very capable of overclocking with with really no issues at all and uh, you know the wiring doesn't look so great but uh, I'm gonna remove the graphics card now and kinda show you a little bit better how it looks okay guys and that's pretty much the inside here uh, I took out the graphics card so you guys get a better idea and that's the M.2 SSD that it comes with you got another slot here this motherboard is perfect for SLI it's got good space and everything on it great for overclocking you got the one blue LED fan in the front 120 millimeter one in the rear and you got the Evo 212 CPU cooler which is eh, it's okay but uh, can't I wasn't able to go any higher than 4.6 gigahertz on this processor otherwise it gets too hot so if you want to go any further you get a water cooler uh, and get a better case uh, you got the two sticks of 8 gigabytes of DDR4 each with 3000 megahertz clock there's your DVD rewritable player right there the wiring is decent this is your semi module power supply and this board is uh, LED also as you could see they're glowing it's pretty nice so like I said before this is pretty much a computer you could just go out and build at Micro Center uh, I don't know if you add the parts all together and price them out is it uh, cheaper than you know fourteen hundred dollars I'm not sure I might have to check and uh, you know put everything in the shopping basket and see the price but if you get this thing as an open box you definitely will get a much better deal than buying parts on your own I mean all this thing needs is it's pretty much a better case and a better CPU cooling you got a, yourself a full out blown custom uh, gaming rig um, and that's uh, that's pretty much for the inside and now we're gonna get into the good stuff and see how this uh, machine does in some of the games in 1080p we're gonna be testing in 1080p and 4k resolution okay guys first game we're gonna test is Battlefield 1 and right now we're at on 1080p settings we're also going to test out 4K. We're on the lowest settings. Everything on the lowest, everything turned off on 1080p. And as you could see, it's a, a 200 frames uh, running pretty good. No issues. So if you want that high frame rate and you don't want everything to be maxed out, you could easily run this on, on the lowest settings at 200 frames. Also, I do want to mention I do have this CPU clocked at 4.6 gigahertz. I know it comes stock 3.7 and 4.7 turbo, but with that left alone, the way it is, 
it definitely doesn't go past I couldn't get it to go any higher than 4.5 turbo and then it kind of like goes back and forth so 4.6 was the sweet spot with this cooler anything higher with this uh, stock uh, Evo 212 cooler CPU cooler really is not good enough it, uh, the, you would have to go to a water cooler on that because the, the temperatures gets too high and this thing crashes so we got I just want to show you the settings as you could see we got 1080p and we're on the lowest we're gonna try now ultra settings let's see how that runs still on 1080p gonna leave these two bottom off Okay. Also, I have the the graphics card, the G, the Asus GTX 1070. It's been overclocked, uh, 130 megahertz extra on the clock, core clock, and it's without any problems. Um, this is pretty much without any. You don't have to increase any voltage or anything. I'm just able to to get this around any problems with any cr crashing or anything. So that's what we got here, pretty much the best settings that I could come up with without any additional uh, voltage uh, over volting or anything like that and not using uh, any liquid cooling in any of the components so that's pretty much how it runs okay so we're on ultra here we are as you could see about 150, 170 it's real nice oh, I hope I can make it here I'm stuck no. Oh boy. Yeah, once you're stuck, that's it. Okay. I hide here for a little bit. Let's see. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's give a 4K try. Hope you guys could see this. Okay, now we're at 4K on Ultra. Of course, uh, you'll see that the the numbers on top will get smaller. That's how we know in 4K. So on 4K on Ultra, with the two bottom options turned off, we're running at you know 50 to 60 frames in this action here no problem oh it shut down of course okay there you go like I said we're on ultra right now at 4k resolution and eh, between 50 and 60 no problem Especially with this all this action here. Uh, let's see how it run on the lowest settings up to 10 of the 4K. Let's see if we get up to 100 frames on the lowest settings on the 4K. Let's see. Yeah, we're about 90. Yeah, close to 100. Not bad at all. Pretty much what you could expect, and uh, this these new games are really CPU intense. So now you got 12 cores, and it's really running nice. And with this bad boy running at 4.6 gigahertz, this process is really good. Okay, and some other boards we're going to be running at a at a hundred or above. These regular stage boards, not too much going on. Okay, guys, well, this is uh, Battlefield 1. Okay, and here we have Hitman. We are on 1080p uh, on the highest settings. And it looks like we're getting about 80 to 90 PS here in this crowd. Look around, oh, gain attention. I don't want that. Oh, people in front of me. Walk this way. See what's here. Yeah, and you see the graphics card clock goes a little bit higher. I guess this one 
uses more GPU than the CPU and you can see the CPU temperature is cooler than uh, than it was a battlefield okay that looks real nice alright let's see what the settings look like okay okay as you see we're on 1080p full screen on all the highest settings Let's try 4K. See how that looks. Okay, there you go. There it is. Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, 4K on the highest settings, you get about 40 to 50 FPS, at least in this area. Wow, look at these plates. They look great, look at that. Fantastic. As you notice, uh, all the games I'm trying, even though the graphic card is a uh, DirectX 12. Uh, so far I've really noticed that the DirectX 11 on all these titles is still performing noticeably better. There's still some issues with DirectX 12 stuttering and frame loss and all kinds of stuff. So we, we're staying with the 4K. So again, we're walking through the crowd and we're in 4K settings. Framers are going lower as we approach the crowd. Here's all the settings. And that's the resolution right there. Let's go a little further into the crowd, see what's going on here. Opa. The game looks amazing. We are using a 1080p monitor, but we're using the DSR option in the NVIDIA control panel in order to allow us to uh, test different resolutions if you guys didn't know about that there's plenty of videos on uh, how to enable DSR okay let's see what do we got here protesters huh wow alright well that's pretty much Hitman thank you okay here's Tomb Raider Rise of the Tomb Raider with the uh, new Tomb Raider and uh, Battlefield 5 coming out in just a few months uh, you know it's a perfect time now to get uh, ready and look for some bargains at your local micro center and uh, get ready for the for these games upcoming okay so where are we at right now we are on 1080p on very high okay these are the settings that I'm using I got the motion blur and the other blur and bloom off and uh, texture quality very high so you know I like my my frame rates to be really high and still be able to to play on pretty much almost max max settings so we're at 1080p that's what we're looking at here with those kind of settings which is I think more than enough we got over a hundred frames uh, there's really no point of motion blur so, it doesn't do nothing for you except brings down the graphics quality. Okay, well it's a good, this is a good scene here. So we're about 140, 150 easily with this setting on, on very high. Let's uh, take a look and what, with the same settings, but we're going to go down to 4K. Okay, apply changes. Yes. Okay, what do we got here? Will this thing work? Okay, there it is on 4K on very high. You 
saw the settings earlier just changed the resolution it's having a little problems you know not a little stutter action but I noticed this game is not a CPU bounded you could see that the CPU jumps around unlike the other games kind of just stays at 4.6 gigahertz so it's really not utilized and of course we had to try Witcher 3 right now we're on 1080p in the lowest possible settings to achieve that 200 frames per second on 1080p which is uh, you know really good you're not really compromising too much because still even on the lowest settings on 1080p with a good monitor everything looks great and just to see this game that's you know one of the harder ones to run especially when uh, you're about to upgrade to a, a system like this, this is just amazing easily in 200s very nice where's the horsey okay let's see what we do here on now we're gonna go to ultra but we'll have the hair works off okay here it is Let's go to this dead dead land. Let's see how it looks. As there are a lot of bodies here, it puts stress on the on the performance. Oh yeah, still looks great. Again, yeah, this is on ultra. with a couple of settings off let's just look at some settings so we we did the video settings graphics as you could see that let's go to post processing I do have all these options off I'm gonna put bloom on sharpening this on the halfway these first three we're gonna have to turn them off I do want to have that really good frame rate and be comfortable I'm not trying to max everything out here Okay, so that's an ultra. Let's see, now I'm lost. Let's see, where's the path? Help me, I'm lost. Oh yeah, we don't want to go there. So it gives you an idea of what we're looking at on on uh, Ultra. Nothing too crazy, but it runs really good. Okay, let's get back to the path. Let's put in the same settings on Ultra with 4K resolution. Let's see if it's even playable. Yep. Yeah, a little, little sluggish. And now you see it's really uh, affecting uh, the frame rates it still is hard to run this game so as you can see we're at the 40s here dipping down to 30s 
high 30s let's go into the village see how this looks let me get the horse be on foot. Uh, and there you have it. This is on 4K. Okay, and here is Grand Theft Auto 5. We will start off at 4K resolution. Let me show you the settings. Okay, V-Sync off, very high, so it's pretty much the best settings you could do to get as close as possible to 60, uh, 60 frames um, on 4K resolution. Okay. It looks fantastic. Again, we're using a 1080p monitor, but I'm using the DSR option so that we could view different kinds of resolutions. And here we go. So this is pretty much the best you could do. And it's really not bad. It looks fantastic. It'll look, of course, even better on the 4K monitor, but it definitely has the capability to play a lot of the games high to ultra settings with a couple of things tweaked here and there. Oh, uh, pretty st pretty steady. Okay, that's it. 50 to 60 frames, no problem. Utilizing that GPU and the CPU to its max potential. Here we go. Oh, uh, let's try. Let's go back to 1080p. Same settings. Let it catch up. Okay. Yeah, you could see it's a lot of. Whew, the frame rates are like almost triple here I guess or it is triple in some cases but there is some stuttering going on and that is why because we have plenty of spaces to fill and on 1080p you could really fill the settings so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna max this bad boy out because Stay tuned. I'll, uh, I will come back with the 1080p because we do have have to get back out of the game. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the 1080p fully maxed out. You could see the detail is great on 1080p. The the asphalt looks real good. A lot of details. Oh, that got snagged. Took too long. All right, we'll start right here. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. And I'm surprised about only 60 frames. The 4K that we had, it wasn't you know it wasn't maxed out, but this is pretty much maxed out, and it's running pretty good at 60. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised. That this is all it's got. But uh, let's take a look. What do you have? Okay. So, yeah. As you could see, that we got the uh, thing max. 
Very high, ultra, whatever is the highest, that's what we got it on. And that is all we get in here. I guess the 4K was a better, you know, better setting. I would go for the 4K setting. This is a little bit higher. You see the frames are going a little bit higher as we're driving. Probably 20, this is about 20 frame rates. Higher than 4K in some areas. And it is maxed out, the settings. So this is pretty much where you, you're to expect. Uh, as you ha as you saw it, I had on on uh, lower settings, and the game would stutter. It's just, it's one of those things where the graphics card is and the CPU are just a little bit too powerful for this for these settings, and that's so that's why the frame rates looked really high before on 1080p or 180, 170, but it would stutter. So when uh, you max everything else together this is going to be a true true frame rates without any stuttering and that's Grand Theft Auto 5 okay everyone just wanted to show you the current price and specs for the power spec gaming computer model number G431 slash G429 which are the both the same computers as you could see the current sale price today is thirteen hundred dollars and it's a hell of a deal uh, especially if you can find this as open box and save quite a bit here and in this particular store they do have an open box mm, you know here's the specs that we spoke about earlier it's a really good computer for the price and here are the parts separate if you wanted to go in Micro Center and build a similar computer. Uh, I try to get as close as possible the best prices uh, to build exactly the same computer. As you could see, if you try to build this yourself, it will cost you a lot more uh, over here, you know, over $200 uh, more than uh, the current sale price for that computer brand new. And here are the parts. As you could see, um, try to get as close as possible to all the same parts that they have, at least the m major ones. And there it is. And that's it here. And of course, don't forget to add in this is a big cost here a Windows 10 Pro uh, pack here, 64 bit is 140. And also, if you wanted them to build this computer for you, you gotta attack another about $140, $150 for that service. So this computer will cost you just about almost $1,700 if you wanted to get the parts yourself. So uh, after looking this over, uh, it seems like this is a no-brainer, as this is a fantastic deal at $1,300. It's a lot of uh, machinery. You know, for for a computer like this, especially with with rooms to to upgrade, and it's a really good motherboard. You could overclock. You could do SLI. Uh, this thing is definitely gonna last you for many years to come. And uh, especially if you could get this at open box uh, price like here they have right now, uh, it's really a great deal. Okay, uh, so this will be it for uh, the review of the. Micro Center Power Spec G429 slash G431 gaming computer. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and help me reach 1000 subscribers. Thank you for watching.